Well, on the whole, we are blessed with getting good weather, usually. Oh, I've done it now, haven't I? I've blown it. But not always good weather. We've been down where there's been some stormy weather. In fact, Storm Dennis 2000... When was that? 20? 2020, yeah. Last year, weren't it? Storm Dennis. Oh, God, I'm glad we was in a lodge then. But anyway, it, this is one of the good things about having cleats and tying the ropes back on the boat because you don't even have to get off the boat to do it you can just untie them as my glamorous assistant is doing there and now making her way to the back now you can't really see because you can't see the trees so much but maybe if you look at the water there you can tell how it's being blown towards this banking that we're on so the wind didn't want to let us go he was saying Oh, I don't know, you stay a little bit longer. So it was a bit tricky getting off. I had to use the bow thrust to get off. And rather than go from here all the way down to the bottom of the dike to turn round, uh, there was hardly any boats behind us, so I just decided the best thing to do would be pull out central and then just reverse out. Because if you have bow thrusters, it is a lot easier. Without bow thrusters, then you can still do it. you just got to keep going forwards a little bit to adjust it now as you can see uh, I tried to get off the the wind's blowing me back um, I'm, I'm having to use both thrusters around about now I think <laughs> the wind saying ah uh, no nah, nah, you're not going anywhere yet so and it can be a lot worse than this because that was only a bit of a stiff breeze in gale force winds, I've seen it before where I think it was the Admiral, he was pinned against there. Um, oh, now I've managed to get out into mid dike. And uh, just straighten up and then reverse back. Which unfortunately you won't be able to see because I've only got this camera.
Well, we're off, and the destination, ultimate destination, is Ramworth. Now, this wasn't on the plan for today. We were supposed to be doing this on the Friday. This is now Thursday the 15th, I think, 15th of April. And um, all we're doing is just having a cruise about, really, and then getting to Ramworth. So I thought, well, let's go down South Walsham. And looking at the footage here, this is almost two hours worth, so I might have to cut that down a little bit. And when I was just looking at this now, it reminded me almost seven years ago to the day, well, seven years, the bike quality half term that's coming up. Um, seven years ago, we was on Royal Oak, and that was the other day that my daughter and a friend were doing the plasticine bit down at... Um, the Bird and Bells in Beckles. Now, seven years ago, when we were coming down here, the Thurn Regatta was on. And I'll put a link at the end in the More Videos link. I'll put a link to that because it's a little bit different than it is at the moment. It's, so we say it's not as quiet as this. If you haven't watched that video, then have a check of that. It uh, might give you an idea of what to expect if you come across a regatta. Well, the weather, obviously, as you can see, is a little bit damp, so I've got the waterproof casing on the GoPro. Now, I haven't turned the sound down on this little section here, but you can't hear hardly anything. So this is the the thing you have with the GoPro camera. It's not it's not going to it's not very good at sound. Well, the older ones aren't anyway. My newer ones are a little bit better. Once I've sussed out the muffle a bit, um, so you may well see my hand appear in front of the screen. <laughs> wiping the rain off the camera. Um, I would normally cut that out uh, when I'm doing the videos, but I, I, I don't want to be doing too much editing. So I might have to cut some out, like I said, because it's almost two hours long, this. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how we get along.
As you can see, I'm using my favoured position in the river, just to the right of centre, uh, and I see a boat overtaking. Um, you don't see if you're inside and you've got the roof and the windows closed. It can be last minute when you actually see your boat. Uh, sometimes you'll hear them rather than see them first. Um, but I saw this guy because I just popped my head out. And um, so I'd moved over a little bit more to give him some room. But there's plenty of room for him anyway. Um, yeah. I think I saw this one later on at Ramworth. So maybe that's what the rush was to get to a, get a mooring. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so that's a thing as well to talk about speeding. Well, you, it's a, it's it's a difficult one, really, because a lot of people, myself included, use these apps now, like the Away one, A W E I G H. I've mentioned it in another video. Um, you just put it on, download it onto your phone and it'll give, tells you the speed you're going at but that is only telling you your speed basically over land I know you're on water but you know what I mean don't you um, but you can be going six mile an hour against a tide and creating a huge wash behind you and that is what it's really all about it's that wash behind you and you don't want to be creating too much of a wash because it damages the bankings and they've got wildlife nesting in there and stuff. So that's why they have the speed limits. It's not so much because um, you can't stop in time, things like that. It's to protect the bankings and the environment. Um, sometimes you can't avoid it. So if you're going over Braden and you get to the other side at sort of like Burr Castle area and Burnie Arms, and you've got a heavy ebbing tide you're going to create wash by just going four mile an hour it just can't be helped because uh, you have to maintain a, you have to give it some throttle to maintain the speed um, I've looked behind me before now at the fishermen's at Burr Castle and I'm thinking I mean, hey, look at those waves there but if you, you can't really slow down too much because you'll end up going in the opposite direction uh, but yes yeah, so I'll speed in well, there's no really need for it unless you're in a mad rush to get somewhere. You may, may have to go a little bit faster to get moored up before dark. Um, that's another one you've probably been told about that on Andover. It's cruising just um, from dawn till dusk. Um, not the other way around, like some people think. <laughs> and what was that? It was a film called From Dusk Till Dawn, if I remember. Was that about vampires or something? Mm. Um, right, so we're almost coming up now, I think, in the far distance there. I can just about pick St. Bennett's Abbey. So we'll have a little bit of music and chill out. And I've had a look at the footage now. I'm not going to cut any out. It's about 1 hour 47 minutes. So if you can stick with it, then fair play to you.
as we approach St. Bennett's with a ghostly apparition in front of us, um, I thought I'd put another extract on from the website, and this is the story of the Shrieking Monk. And I reckon this is what Russell encountered when he went in there at midnight after drinking about five bottles of wine. Mm, you never know. He hasn't gone back since. The Shrieking Monk of St. Bennet's, as retold by William Henry Cook. In common with all Orthodox ruined abbeys and priories, the gloomy old gateway of St. Bennet's is haunted. The apparition is known as the Shrieking Monk and is of fearful significance. Woe betides those who hear the fearful screams, and fateful it is for those who have the ill luck to witness the final act of the dread tragedy which takes place at midnight in the ruined gateway. The performance commences with a fearful commotion above which frantic cries of agony are heard. During a lull, a stout beam is seen thrust out above the archway. Shortly after, at the end of it, is seen the form of a monk writhing in the agonies of death. Then the body swings, stiff and stark in the darkness of the night, an appalling groan closes the awful scene. It is generally believed that the apparition is that of Esric, the bailiff monk who basely betrayed the abbey so as to become abbot. The spectre is more often seen in the late autumn or winter, a dark foggy night being the most suitable time. Even to this day few would care or dare to pass the old ruin after darkness had set in. Many years ago, on All Hallows' Eve, a wherryman lost his way in the fog and darkness. At last he found himself opposite the old gateway when an extra special performance was going on. He was rooted to the spot with horror to witness the awful closing scene. As soon as it was over, with a yell of terror, he rushed forward to reach his wherry which was moored in the river, close to the old checkers inn. He fell into the water there and was drowned. There was another apparition of good import which used to appear on the causeway leading from the abbey to the hospital of St James. All that we can learn of it was very shadowy and undefined. Some think it had to do with the rescue of the young monk Edwin and the holy Saint Benedict as recorded in the legend of the seal. An improvised system of drainage and the high cultivation of the land is supposed to have put an end to the apparition but no system of drainage or cultivation appeared to have the slightest effect on the shrieking spectre. Well, you can bet your Scottish pound that Russell didn't go in there um, after listening to that. Uh, he probably hasn't heard that one before. I, w I would doubt I would go in there after listening to that at midnight. Uh, anyway, we're on South Walsham. Well, we're going down South Walsham Broad. Um, and then we're on Fleet Dyke. And you do see boats moored here, well moored, and you think, what they're tied up to? Because it looks like they're just in the reeds, like that one there that we just passed. Uh, but there are a few little spots where um, I think people sort of, they know exactly where they are. And there's little sort of gaps in the reeds. Because what's just one here now on the right, is there? No. And they just pull in, and it's you, you can actually step onto the bank, and it looks like you can. It looks like it's... It's a bit dodgy, but I've seen people do it, as you will see, there's a boat on the left, a bit farther down. Now, I've just Googled the ship in at South Walsham, and I'm sad to hear that it's actually closed. It closed, I think, in July 2020, and it hasn't opened since, I don't think. If anybody knows any different, then please let me know. Uh, on Google, when I've gone onto it, and it says, you visited here four years ago. So... Well, that must be the last time we was there, obviously. We had a walk down from Fleet Dyke. Now, depending on where you're moored in Fleet Dyke, it can take you about half an hour to walk down to the village. Um, at the pub shot, I don't think I'll be doing that walk. Um, but we've come down here a few times and moored in the broad, and it's uh, it's, it's really peaceful. And we've had been lucky and got some really nice sunsets. So, it's a nice cruise down, and... Let's just see what's on the way. Put a bit of music on and chill out again. Deep breaths. See, there was a joke about that, weren't there? But I'm not allowed to say them anymore. Sexist. Big breaths. Yeah. 
can't say it. Come on, anybody know what it is? Y you can put it in comments if you want. It's not only wild mooring available on the Fleet Dyke, there are some good moorings scattered about on the way down. And if they're full, like I said, you can always mud weight in the broad, which we have. Now, I find this is a good first nighter for people. In the summer months, when it's staying light and later, if you get your boat late from any of the boat yards, for example, and you want a nice cruise, um, um, you don't want to be worried about getting somewhere to moor, uh, take you from Roxham about two and a quarter hours, from Stalham about two and a quarter hours, from Awning it's about an hour and from Akel Bridge and Potterayam it's about an hour and a quarter to get to South Walsham. So and you don't need like I said unless you've got dogs um, which obviously you'll need to get moored up on terra firma to let them off but if you thought thinking where, where, where can we get? It's a bit late. Uh, as long as it's light, come down here, drop the mud weight. I don't forget the tips about not tying it off at low water. Don't tie it off tightly. <laughs> now another tip for mud weights. Now on ours, we've got a... Uh, it's electric. It's electric winch. And a lot of them are just tied to a rope. Now they're pretty heavy, those mud weights. Otherwise you'd drift, wouldn't you? They weren't heavy. So, be careful. Don't throw it in. Just drop it in. I've seen people swinging them about and throwing them between the legs and thinking, oh god, they want to break their ankle or... And make sure the rope's not right round your leg while you throw it in. <laughs> I, know it's, I know it's pretty straightforward, but believe me, these things have happened. And, well, the weather's gorgeous, isn't it? Um, we have spoke about these sticky things, aren't we, before. This is pretty straightforward because he's coming in a straight line, he's not tacking, he's got the wind behind him. He's got the wind in his sails, this fella, and there's plenty of it. Fair play to him. I don't think I'd fancy that in this weather. Right, let's have some more music and get into the broad. Thank <laughs> you. 
And on the left we can see a good stretch of free moorings. This is the last free moorings before you get to the broads. And the first broad that you come to is the outer broad. Which that makes sense really, doesn't it? And the other one is called the inner broad. And we will talk about those because there's something going on down there that I'm guessing was the first timer. We'll have a look at that when we get on the broad. But just after you get after these moorings here there's a boatyard on the left I think it's called Russell Marine and you can get uh, water and pump out there um, if needed and fuel um, we've only ever had water because we've only ever nipped in there when we've been on an higher boat so we just needed some water after we've been moored up overnight in the, in the broad but like, like I say look there's loads of moorings here but they are popular, they will get filled up, but you've always got the option, as I say. If you can't get moored up there, if you haven't got any dogs, then you can just pop down into the broad and drop the old mud weight.
As you come into the inner broad, which we've just gone past, there's a little sign on your left. I suppose you could miss it if you just looking around at the scenery, I suppose. Uh, but basically what it is, all you can do in this broad is cruise around it. You can't stop, you can't mud weight. Well, you can stop and just loiter for a little bit, but you can't mud weight, you can't fish. There's no moorings anywhere along the banking. So basically all you're supposed to do is just cruise around it. Um, now there's two boats down at the bottom here, I'm guessing that they either didn't read the sign um, or they did. Well in fact, my theory that I had at this moment in time when I saw them is that well they either don't care or they don't know. But I saw the guy on one of the fur craft boats um, at Ramworth later on in the day, or well in the morning, and he was trying to get the hose pipe and I helped him out with it and he said oh I wonder how this is going to go so I took it that they were first timers that they'd never been on a boat before and um, he wasn't sure what he was doing and um, so I have a feeling that they didn't see the sign because like I say you're not supposed to moor in this broad Thank <laughs> you. 
Turned out nice again, hadn't it, Mother? Well, you'd think it were a different day, wouldn't you? I can assure you it's not. It's the same day. It's coming down the uh, the fleet dike to the broad to now leaving the, the inner broad. It, the sky is totally different. And it was to stay like that for the rest of the day, thankfully. Now, where's the gorilla gone? I want to know. I've asked this question before on one of my previous videos because when you come to the outer broad, which we will be doing shortly, in fact I probably started this little story off too early. Mm. Yeah, I'll come back to that one. Whilst the view from the camera is good, it's not as good as you being there in real life. Uh, you know, over on the right, the, there's a little road, and there's across the road there's houses, and they've got extensive gardens. And the first time we walked down through from Fleet Dyke, saw a gorilla in the garden, and then subsequently on uh, visits afterwards when we've had a cruise around the broad, you can see the gorilla. Now, last year or possibly the year before, the gorilla has gone. It's done one. I don't know where it's gone. Uh, and I did mention it, and somebody said they'd seen it in, I think they said Roxham, but I could be wrong with that. It might be it's either Roxham or Awning. So has anybody seen this gorilla recently? Has it come back? Has it moved house? Is it in a zoo? Anybody get any photographs of it? Now this is roughly the sp place where we normally mud wait, just on the left here. Um, and that's another thing. When you come in and drop your mud weight and you've got your nose pointing towards those trees and you think, oh, I'm a good 15, 20 foot away, bear in mind your boat may be 35 foot long and when the tide turns 
and it swings round, the back end could end up in the trees. So give yourself enough room away from the trees when you're dropping your mud weight.
Now in this series of videos you may have noticed that there is nobody fishing. Well actually I did see somebody fishing off the back of a boat at London Bridge later on in this week. And yeah, that's you can get substantial fines if you caught fishing out of season. Now there's a closed season which runs from the 15th of March to the 15th of June inclusive and you cannot fish. Now some people think you can still fish for pike and, but you can't. You can't fish for anything whatsoever. And when you can fish from the 16th of June to the 14th of March um, you need a license. Now if you haven't got a license you, uh, you can have a fine up to two and a half thousand pound I think it is now something like that. So for the sake of it it's not it's not worth risking it. A lot of people don't even know I'm guessing. They go down to Latham's and buy a little kit uh, for the kids and they're fishing. Now if you're under 13 it's free. Um, so all you have to do is apply online. I always get one every year, even if sometimes I don't even use it. Um, yeah, so fishing in the months of, well, from the 15th of March to the 15th of June is a no-no. But I bet you've seen lots of people doing it. And when you can fish uh, from June the 16th, it's advisable not to fish for pike when it gets really warm. If the water temperature is above 21 degrees, the, there's not as much ox oxygen in the water and the pike can get a bit li listless and it can be harmful for them if they're being dragged in uh, from a, on a rod and a reel. So it's advisable, it's not illegal, uh, but it is advisable not to, to protect them. That's why you see a lot of people in the boats on the rivers just moored up at the side on their little fishing boats. Uh, with big bungs in the water and now they're fishing for pike and they do that in autumn mainly because that's the best time to be catching these fish they are they, they might look a little bit ferocious when you look at a picture of a pike I'll see if I can find one and shove that on the screen for you now might look ferocious but they are very delicate and you need specialist equipment for getting the hooks out and things once you've caught them you don't want to be trying to get a treble hook out of a mouth like that with a little six inch discharger no, no, no. So as we were coming up the dike, there's a boat on the right and he's just leaving the mooring and then he sees us because I think what he wanted to do was turn around to go back up and out onto the viewer but he does the right thing here because if he'd have come across and turned there we'd have had to take evasive action um, so what he does he pulls over to the left a little bit um, and stays on that banking letting us pass him in the centre of the river and then as soon as he gets behind us he turned around to come up the dike so obviously an experienced cruiser because you do get them where they pull out and they think they've got enough time to turn but you run them upon them very quickly even though you're only doing four mile an hour it can uh, you can get there a bit quick Thank you. 
Almost at the top of Fleet Dyke, and uh, St. Bennett's Abbey is straight ahead. So I think we'll have a little bit more from the St. Bennett's Abbey website. And this one is The Legend of the Seal. The Legend of the Seal, as retold by William Henry Cook. Many years ago, in the reign of King Henry I, there was a young monk of the Abbey named Edwin who wanted to follow his own will with an easy conscience. The godly discipline of the Abbey was irksome to him. Many were the chastisements which his unsatisfactory conduct brought down upon him. He had to carry the lantern of penance. He was whipped and sentenced to punishments without end. He was repeatedly sent to prison, but all in vain. He remained unhumbled and knew no sense of shame. It was during one of these imprisonments that the pious brother monk, having obtained permission from the abbot, visited him to try to move him to a better state of mind. He might as well have tried to move a rock. To all his warnings, entreaties, arguments and expostulations, he received only one answer. His own will and pleasure were the only laws the monk would obey. The good brother in despair turned to leave him, but first put into his hand a small relic. It was a single hair of St. Benedict, and bade him ever to keep it on his person in remembrance of a friend. This touched the right chord. Edwin preserved for a friend's sake that which he otherwise would have thrown away as worthless. It was well he did so, not that he seemed the better for it, but rather waxed worse and worse till one day he took the last fatal steps and ran away from the convent to which his vows bound him. Far he wandered, following the proud instincts of his carnal will, neither pleasing God nor regarding man. 
It so happened that as he journeyed on, foot sore and weary, a gallant knight mounted on a noble steed overtook him. Weary monk, whither goest thou? said an insinuating voice. I go no whither, replied Edwin. Then follow me, said the stranger. I have need of an esquire, and thou, by thy manly looks and well built frame, art made for better service than the life of a nomad. Thou shalt have thy fill of pleasure, and a share in many a noble enterprise, and plentiful wage. Lo, here is thy first coin. Edwin gazed on the heavy purse which the strange knight held towards him. I will serve thee, said Edwin, taking the purse. As he did so, for the first time he beheld the countenance of the stranger. It was that of a hideous dragon. Edwin dropped the purse and cried out in terror. Ha, ha, it is too late, said the fiend triumphantly. Thou hast taken the coin. Thou promised to serve me. Thou shalt follow thy will, for thy will is my will. He then seized the monk with an irresistible grasp. At that instant a sword thrust and pierced the dragon, from whose armour there flowed a shower of sparks and fire. With a howl of rage the fiend vanished. Swooning with fear, Edwin could just distinguish in front of him a bright figure in a closed vest and gown. A lofty cap was seen issuing out of a coronet. In his right hand was a great broadsword. Then he heard a sweet voice saying, Those that bear about with them a remembrance of me, I remember, but thou must return and do the will of God, lest worse befall thee. It was St. Benedict, and the relic given to him by a pious brother had saved him. So Edwin returned to the abbey and became obedient to his vows. After reading this legend, it's clear that the carvings on the west front of the gateway refer to this miraculous deliverance. I woke up in the world I wanted Sunrise dancing with the morning In your eyes I swear I saw it I woke up in the world I wanted I woke up in the world you gave me New horizon in the making Wish I could bottle up and save this moment I woke up in the world I wanted It used to be a dream But now it's you and me It used to be a dream Now it's you and me I woke up in the world I wanted Better than I ever saw it All the dreams of life the hope you brought in I woke up in the world I wanted Used to be Now it's you and me It used to be a dream But now it's you and me in the world I wanted and I realized 
just all of a sudden This used to be a dream Now it's just you and me
Everything I had was everything When all I had was you
Well, we're almost on Malthouse Broad, and over to your right you can see the Wildlife Centre. Now, that building is a floating building, and I didn't actually realise this until recently when I saw that they had a drawbridge. Um, yeah, the drawbridge was up, and I thought, oh, yeah, you can't walk there. Um, and inside there, when when it's okay to do so, they are on the first floor, they have uh, binoculars. And you can have a look a bit out over the broad at the wildlife. Uh, and there's a little shop and stuff. You can buy bits of memorabilia things. And um, here on our left now, as we're coming a bit nearer to the broad, we've got Ramoth Island. Um, right, well, it's £10 to more overnight. And there's no facilities. You can't get anywhere. Uh, there is a lot of goose poo all over the place um, but I have wood there before I, it's not one that I would say yeah let's head for uh, Ramoth Island I have wood there before when we was fishing with my mate who was on another boat with his wife Karen uh, we met up and I thrashed him at fishing we thrashed him at um, crib I'm sorry Mark <laughs> I said I won't tell anybody about that um, Yes, yeah, so we moored there, but I wouldn't I'd go out of my way to moor there, even if Ramworth was full, I'd probably just do a mud weight job. Um, now, Ramworth itself, a mooring, can be very busy. It's very busy in the winter months because uh, cause you've got the water, um, you've got the electrical cup, which on this occasion, when we got here, which this was the plan, you see. Now, Christine wanted electrical cup so she could use the earth thing give bobs, tongs, whatever they call them. You know, them things that women use on the earth. It's not really straighteners. Not, I don't know what they are. But anyway, we need an electric hookup. And when we got here, the electric was off. Uh, but now they've got, um, on the stairs, you've got the BA Information Centre now. Uh, that's new. That had only just recently opened. And then you've got the shop. And then you, you've got the Monsters and that is a lovely pub and when you're allowed to go inside and it's cold they have a lovely roaring fire in there and um, we wasn't allowed to go inside on this occasion like a, the pubs had only just opened out its doors and it were a bit chilly but they actually had a gazebo with eaters in it which was quite good um, but I met up with a couple of guys later on um, and you've got at the wildlife centre you've got the boardwalk you can have a little bit of a walk around there and then further up the road from there you've got the St Helens Church now you couldn't go up the tower um, you haven't been able to go up the tower for a while since lockdown first started last year uh, because the you've got 89 winding steps um, and you can I mean it's very very close <laughs> you get somebody coming down the other way you become very close very soon because, it, well, uh, it's tight. And then at the top you've got two steps of ladder, two sets of ladders. Um, but if you can get up there, the views are amazing on a clear day. Anyway, um, yeah. So Ramworth for me, well, because we are based in Arning, and we pick up the boat say early afternoon on a Saturday usually. I mean this time we came down really early um, on the first day. But on the Saturday we normally come here because it's half an hour's cruise away. Um, so uh, yeah. There's a, in fact I don't think I've ever not been able to get in. There was one occasion where I came down and it was full and I just had a loiter about and then I'm thinking oh come on we'll go somewhere else. And Christine just spotted a day boat coming out. Now you see, if you're on a day boat coming down here, there's a little dike to the left. You can't probably see it so much on the camera. But there's a little dike, and that is for day boats. But you do get people in day boats mooring on the stair there. And they're not really supposed to do. That's what the dike's for. And what I decided to do here was go a bit farther down to the right hand side. But it was a bit windy and I ended up coming and ended up back right at the side of this first port you can see here now with this one that's more stern on at the, the first one here this first port 
ended up at the side on that little gap there. Now the guy who's on the on the gem, he thought I did a really professional job by going in there, but truth be told, the wind was pulling me that far over that I just ended up drifting into that spot. Um, it might have looked good, but the best thing, my idea for this one, which I didn't do because I didn't think I was going to go as far down as this, um, is to reverse in here. It's e actually easier to reverse down this section and turn into a, a mooring than it is to try and go forward, especially there's boats there where these are right now on the left hand side. You haven't got enough room to get your front end over towards this right hand side to get your back end round, which I was trying to do. I was trying to get round there, but the wind weren't letting me. Um, now this is where they've put the BA have reserved this mooring now for a little day trip boat that used to be in the dike, uh, used to be in that little day boat dike. Um, but now they've put that there, which some people used to like mooring on that stretch there, because if they've got an outboard motor, you can't stir more, then that was a good place for them. But if the boat's a little bit on the big side, they're not going to get in there anymore. So yes, yeah, so I'm whizzing it in reverse now, and it looks good. <laughs> Just according to this guy, he said he's it, good to see a professional. But like I say, it was more good luck than good judgement. Well, that's about it for this epic. What are we on? 1 hour 48 minutes almost coming up to. And in the next one, we leave Ramworth and we head up towards Roxham. Uh, we follow Matt and Murray up the river. And, um, well, let's see what I can come up with for that. Um, see if I can come up with any more tips. Um, any questions, drop them in the comments. If you're enjoying it, let me know. If you're not enjoying it, let me know. Um, so make sure you subscribe, because I don't always post in the Facebook groups that I've done the new video. So if you subscribe, you'll get a notification, especially if you ring that little bell to get them.